Praise God. What a joy it is to come your way again with the word of God. I've been teaching about relationships. Um, and um, I started from relationship one woo one. I, I talked about the single phase of life, what it is, what it is not. I talked about, uh, I did relationship one or two. I talked about some common mistakes single people make. And then I did relationship 103 and i talked about the empowerment necessary for single people today i want to do relationship 104 and um, i want to talk about sexual purity i'll start by teaching from first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3 to 5 i'll read from king james for this is the will of god even your sanctification that ye should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the last of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God. In the past week, I've had the opportunity to talk to a lot of people, and um, most of the ladies I've spoken to have asked me why they've gone through a lot of um, disappointment in relationships, heartbreak in relationships, and still seem to get no commitment from the gentlemen or the men they've been in relationships with. Um, I remember having a very interesting conversation with the first person I spoke to, and I uh, once she told me she was born again, and she explained the circumstance that a lot of people had come her way. Uh, she was already in her thirties, um, late thirties actually, and um, almost forty, and um, nobody was committing. Um, I just had one question. Once she finished talking, I wanted to find out: Have you had sex with any of them? To which she answered. That yes, I've had sex with all of them. And so I explained to her that once that happens, then it fights the opportunity of you getting commitment from those you've been sexually involved with. I want you to understand that God knows what sex is. God understands what sex is. But then in the scriptures, God explains to us the place of sex in relationships. And God wants us to know that the place of sex in relationships uh, is in marriage. In a dating relationship, in a courting relationship, God regards sex as fornication, a sin. But in marriage, it is a righteous, holy act of love to be experienced between two married couples. Now, for many people um, who are listening or who watch this video, I want you to understand that putting, uh, that is engaging in sex before marriage is one cause, is one of the leading causes of people not having commitment in their relationships. And I understand sex is everywhere. Sex is all around us. It is in the commercials we see uh, on the TV, the commercials we listen to. It is in the songs we hear. You know, you don't have to go far. You see people dressed very funny. Um, even when you come to church, you see that you see people um, when they are dancing, even the dancing move depicts sex. You see people talking and um, all of that comes with a lot of sex appeal. Now, because all of that gets thrown at us, many of us, even those of us in the church, have not learned well how to manage our sexuality. And God has a lot to say about that. You know, we thought that the Bible doesn't really talk a lot about that. Actually, when I got born again and I went to church, if you had um, something to say and you had questions to ask about sex, uh, some of the elders we met in the in the church all they would do is they will tell you to pray god has put um, a desire in all of us now until you are married god wants us to learn to control the desire but then before you get married the desire does not die the desire is still present in you and god wants us to learn how to manage that desire how to control that desire until we are ready for marriage now i want you to understand that if you are not learning to do that and you respond to every feeling every edge every emotion and you are getting with everybody sleeping with everybody giving some to everybody who you meet i want you to understand that you are going to miss out on the will of God for your life. It is not the will of God for his children to be engaging in sex before marriage. And I like to reiterate that. Um, 
as as we as we look at the society we're living for instance um we realize that our society is driven towards sex driven towards lust you know um for for this youtube channel for instance i wanted to learn about what makes videos go viral you know and in my thinking i thought that if somebody ever asked me pastor what do you think makes videos viral on youtube i'll talk about content and then as i began to learn as i began to watch a lot of videos i found out that most of them talked about the cover picture and they they mentioned that if the cover picture had sexual undertones it was easy to generate a lot of views because then most people will look at the picture uh in the quest to satisfy some cravings okay now um interestingly it is not just people who use this as a bait to get people to watch their youtube videos satan also uses this as a bait to trap a lot of christians and so healthy wholesome relationships that could have grown to glorify god are baited by the devil and so out of uh, the devil using sexual undertones people are caught and people fall in that trap and become uh, victims of that now as i teach i want to uh, i want us to look into the word of god and find out what god says and um the kind of help that god has for us now first of all i want you to know that god knows that you have those emotions and those feelings you have in your body god is not confused about that now how god wants us to manage it in first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 4 god wants us to control god wants us to contain and he says that that is uh if we are able to possess our vessels in sanctification and honor now the 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 part where he talks about honor in this scripture it, it means that if we can contain our vessels if we can possess our vessels in sanctification it honors god i want you to understand that this is what god requires of us that this is a desire this is an emotion this is something we feel in our bodies but as long as we don't yield to it it is a way of honoring god it is a way of pleasing god i've heard a lot of arguments also people have said but pastor you know the people that uh the gent uh, the men that will come your way these days they want to at least try they want to at least taste they want to at least test before they marry you you see what i want you to understand is that um this is not uh cake that we are selling on the market and even if if it were cake the saying is that you can't eat your cake and have it and i want you to understand you can't uh just jump into bed with everybody that comes your way and think that okay he's testing i'm testing him and then later we'll get married because if that is the argument then what we as what you will be saying is that sex is the most important thing in the marriage it is not the most important thing in the marriage so i want you to get that now there are reasons why god requires for us to stay uh, celibate before marriage now one of them is to build trust into your future one of them is to build trust into your future in the years i've been a pastor i interview couples and i ask them have you been having sex with each other and then sometimes they say no pastor and they are lying and what i want you to understand is that if you can answer a question like that with somebody who claims they love you who you claim you love and you sit in a place and the both of you agree together to lie what you have is that you know that in the future there's no trust because the same way you agreed and lied to your pastor the same way you can agree to yourself to lie to each other praise the lord and so god allows us to go through the phase of relationship that is dating courtship without sex so that we can build trust into our future also the second reason why god requires of us to do that is because it is a seed we are sowing if you can be in a relationship and abstain from sexual involvement you are sowing a seed so that should you marry then you have already sown that seed and whenever need be you can go back to what you did before now this person that you just met today and you started having sex with the very day you met 
met how is the person going to deal with it when you have to travel you know you are you are away for work you are away for school for some reason you the lady are pregnant and it's a very difficult one and you can't fulfill your duties of having sex with him how is he going to cope and so god puts this in place so that it becomes a seed that you're going to harvest for the future and so for those of you who are indiscriminately having sex now that you are dating or courting i want you to know that this is a fruit that you are going to harvest in the future for those of you who are abstaining i also want you to know it's a fruit that you are going to harvest in the future now god shows us from the scripture that this is one of the ways that we create a differential between those of us who are born again and those who are not born again and so by staying sexually pure we demonstrate that we are children of our father in heaven the world does not do that but we do that to show that we are different from the world they have the feelings that we have we have the feelings that they have except that we don't gratify and honor those feelings like they do we abstain we contain we possess our vessels in honor to god and so this becomes an act of worship the world says if you feel it do it we say if you feel it kill the feeling within you if you feel it kill it and so we kill the feeling until it is an appropriate time to gratify it and to honor it and that becomes a way to honor god i'd like to close today by teaching you two simple ways you can possess your vessel now number one i want you to always pay attention to the scripture in proverbs chapter 6 verse 27 proverbs chapter 6 verse 27 says that you can't embrace fire in your bosom and your clothes not be burnt. I, w- I want you to pay attention to it. If you want to honor God by staying sexually pure, stay away from fiery situations. Stay away from fiery situations. There are some situations that are like fire. As long as you embrace them, your clothes are going to be burnt. Don't be alone with somebody of the opposite sex for a prolonged periods of time in dark quiet places where nobody is you know those are compromising situations don't ever get yourself in a position like that if you want to fight fornication and you keep going into situations and positions like that it will be very difficult for you to fight it and so if you want to fight fornication it's important that you stay away from fiery situations finally i want you to learn to keep your thoughts pure now mostly the devil can shoot thoughts into your mind send imaginations into your mind what you do is that if it is impure you reject it what you do is that if it is impure you reject it now one of the things for instance that comes with adulthood and even uh, in the years i've grown up a little when i was younger and i was a younger christian it was so easy to handle if we were watching movies and there was a scene with nudity you know or sexually explicit uh, content would we'll just you know fast forward and then we grew older and we became more mature christians and we became more relaxed and so now if there was a scene like that you take your time and you enjoy the scene and watch it now all the time you are watching those scenes there's content that satan can keep playing back in your mind so i want you to know that if you want to keep your mind pure you avoid things that the the enemy can play back to contaminate to corrupt and to trouble your mind and so if you want to keep your mind pure aside actively intentionally filling your thoughts with scripture and pure things make sure that you are not consuming unhealthy things that will end up corrupting your mind that will end up contaminating your mind i hope this video has been a blessing um please pay attention to these things i've shared with you moving forward practice them it helps you and increases your chances of getting at a good healthy relationship that ends up in marriage as long as it is free sex for all please listen you are limiting your chances of having a good and a healthy marriage in the future god bless you so much